I want to talk a little bit about what happens during the probation period. The top three issues that I have seen during probation periods, one is lack of initiative. If, you, if you've seen the, the video about um, hierarchy like the, and the, the slide with the bell curves, what kind of manager do you prefer, you know where that's coming from. And this is a big deal. I mean, f many migrants coming from countries that are more hierarchical than Canada will initially be perceived as lacking initiative in their first job. It happens frequently. The second issue is teamwork, being a good team player. So where does that come from? Remember the we versus I, individualistic versus collective? Well, being a good team player by individualistic standards is different from being a good team player by collective standards. Remember the Chinese restaurant versus Canadian restaurant? That's exactly what happens. And the third one is feedback. So remember in the video, like uh, there's two videos on feedback. The idea is people receive feedback but may not understand what they're being told. So at this point, I'd like everybody to close those handouts because, like, because I want you to do an exercise and the answers are there. So you'll have them later on, but I want, to do, I want you to do the exercise without looking at the answers. Obviously, it's more fun. So here's the idea. When the average Canadian says, we have a problem, by choosing the word problem, that person is telling you how bad the situation is in their mind. Because if it was worse, they would use a stronger word. If it wasn't as bad, they would use a milder word. So on a scale of one to four, where one is no big deal, four is terrible, two and three are in between, how bad is the problem? Two. Well, I'm going to ask you to just, you know, do it in small group. I find it's way more fun if you do it together as opposed to by yourself. Okay? But the question is, how bad is the problem? So let's say as a group, you agree on a particular number. So if you, so if you put it in position two, then you have to find words for the other cells on the same line. So one is lower than two. What's not as bad as a problem? Three is higher than two. What's worse than a problem? Four is the highest number. What's the worst kind of problem we can think of? What's the word that will describe terrible problems? If you put problem in position three, you have to find words for position four, two, and one. If you put problem in position one, you have to find words of position two, three, and four. Is everybody with me up to this point? Make sense? Okay. Each line is a separate exercise. The words you use in the first line should not appear in the other two lines and vice versa. All right? Go ahead. Everybody has looked at all three words? Yeah? Okay, let's come back together then. So how bad is the problem? Ah, that's interesting. Okay. So I'll give you the answer I get most of the time when I do this exercise in Canadian corporations. Most of people will say a problem is bad, but it could be worse and put it in position three. Right. Yeah. Houston, we have a problem. Apollo 13. Right. That was bad. Could be worse. What is it called when it's worse than a problem? Cut, cut, yeah. So the words I typically get in position four will be these. Crisis, disaster, catastrophe, emergency, train wreck, showstopper, debacle, fiasco, gong show. Okay. Okay. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh my God. Position two, I typically hear issue, trouble, difficulty. In position one, it's a concern, challenge, situation. situation. My personal favorite, a learning opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you all know what that implies. You are going to change. Yes. Okay. Now, did you notice how many words we found? Yeah. Lots of them. Yeah. So how well do recent immigrants do on this exercise? Uh, Particularly if they speak English as a second language. Very difficult. Yeah, this is very difficult to do in a second language. Yeah. Even in your first language, right? Because I immediately... <laughs> Go ahead. Because I can immediately, immediately see how challenge for me could have been a four. We have a challenge and oh my God, it's a big deal. Deal, exactly. Yeah. And that's the key point. What does the word mean to you? And what does it mean to the person, you, when you, you, to the other person, when you use that word or vice versa? And the point is, in many, many cases, the message that is received is not the message that was meant to be sent. And that's a big issue because I've seen so many people 
run into difficulties during their probation period, some lose their job, because they were given negative feedback from their managers. They heard the words, they understood every word, but they did not understand what message they were being given. In particular, they didn't understand that a change was expected. And so they continued doing the same thing. And what happened? Well, the manager got more and more upset. Because at that point, it's like, well, I told you to change, and you're not changing. So in other words, you don't want to make the change I'm asking you to do. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't understand what change you were asking me to make. And that's a big issue in my experience. I can tell you, like working with accounting firms, like in particular, like PwC, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, uh, before we talked about the issues related to feedback, I would say 40% of their international transferees would, get in, would have a problem, well, uh, a surprise, when they got their first written performance appraisal. They thought they would get, so accounting firms tend to rate one to five, one being fantastic and five, you will not be at five next year because either we will have fired you or you will have improved, okay? So three being the average. And so like most of these transferees were rated one or two in their home country. And suddenly they arrive here and they, like 40% of them got a four when they were expecting a one or two. And I would say a few percent, like say 5%, got a five when they expected a one or two. They did not understand the feedback they were given along the way. I mean, if you speak English as a second language, this exercise is very difficult. Because when you learn a second language, I'm sure many of you are, can remember that situation when you started, you, like, you are really happy if you know one word in the language you're trying to speak for every word in your first language. Synonyms, oh, later, one thing at a time. So we end up in a situation like this. You have a toolbox, but your toolbox contains only a hammer. That's the only tool you have. What are your options? To hammer or not to hammer? I mean, these are the only two things you can do. If you hammer a nail, life is good. If you hammer a screw, you make a big mess. And that's what happens. People end up using the only word they have, and in some circumstances, it works. In other circumstances, it doesn't. I have worked with many engineers from China. Their scale was problem, big problem, small problem. <laughs> That's it. They did not make the difference between problem, concern, and issue. I worked with a guy from Vietnam. The word he used all the time was piece of cake. Everything was a piece of cake. We only understood what he meant one day. We had a big problem. So we're all in a room, and everybody's scratching their head. We're brainstorming. And he goes, oh, big piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Even for people who speak European-based languages, the word problem exists in pretty much every European-based uh, European language I know with minor spelling variations. So in French, problème with an accent and an E. Spanish, problema. Portuguese, problemo. Okay. Ger Dutch, it's problem, L-E-E-M. In German, and I think in Polish also, is exactly the same spelling. In, Pol in German, the P is always capitalized. That's the only difference. <laughs> Russian, Romanian, problema, again. Okay. So people will see this word, latch on to it, thinking it means the same thing as the word in their first language. The reality is not quite. For example, a French problem is position one. Okay. It's no big deal. Yeah. It's a math problem. The, uh, mm -hmm. the professor has the answer already, or it's at the back of the book. Okay. So message sent and message received can be vastly different. And so one piece of advice I give counselors, and I know it's not easy to do, okay, like uh, uh, in a number of situations you won't be able to do it at all. But if you can, okay, it's when somebody got a job, when they get their first written performance appraisal, ask them to send it to you and discuss it with them. Because on a number of occasions people will read it and they do not, what they take out of it is not what the person wanted them to take out. Okay. The other thing, if you can, again, if you can, is if you can follow people and in particular call the manager of that person, you can nip some of these issues in the bud. Meaning like you can find out what kind of problem, because sometimes the manager will simply, uh, it's not a big deal, so I won't bring it up, 
but it still annoys them. And over time, you end up with these things kind of, kind of grow faster. And so if you find out from the manager, well, there are these issues, then you can kind of essentially pass the message on to the person you helped find a job and m increase the chance of them keeping that job, in essence. Let's go to error. What's a mild version of an error, position one? No big deal. So position one, I hear these words, inaccuracy, oversight, omission, typo, oops, boo-boo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody mentioned boo-boo. At least one group will mention boo. I said bug. Oh, oh, yeah, bug. Yeah, that could also go there. Bug is a pretty generic word. So it could, you, have bad, you have really bad bugs in IT and some really not, not so bad. So it's a, it's a little bit like situation, a kind of a word that can, for some it's terrible, for others not, a, not nearly as bad. Yeah. Position two, I often hear error or glitch. And then it's a mistake. So one key question, is an error worse or not as bad as a mistake? What I find is it depends on which version of English you've learned. In Canadian and American English, error tends to mean it happens. Yeah. Mistake tends to mean you should have known better. In the UK, in South Africa and India, it's the reverse. An error there is worse than a mistake. So our wires are crossed on this one. Position four, the words you're going to hear depend on the context. In an office, you will hear words like blunder, fault, wrong, failure, negligence. CLM stands for career limiting move. <laughs> In other words, you need to redo your resume. Okay? Blunder sounds way worse in Canada than in the UK. I've had a number of Brits put blunder in position one. Wrong sounds way worse in English than the equivalent word in French or in German. In the field, what words do you hear in position four? You know, like in a mine, assembly line, uh, rig, uh, construction site? Typically, you hear four letter words followed by up. <laughs> Something show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you'll excuse my language, it's a fuck up, screw up, foo bar, snap, foo, cluster fuck. Mm -hmm. okay. That's a double whammy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Double Double whammy? Double whammy is pretty bad, yes, I would say. Like, uh, but it means there's two things compounding together. Okay. Because the word double implies that mm -hmm. you, know, you have one mistake and then another one on top of it. Okay? So words like these, obviously, should not be used in c corporate offices. Mm -hmm. Because that will become a career limiting move. But if you don't use four letter words in the field, what happens? You won't get people's attention. Exactly. There's no sense of urgency without four letter words, <laughs> in my experience. Yeah. So you see how the choice of words matters tremendously in English, mm -hmm. and therefore how difficult it is for people who operate in a second language. Mm -hmm. Let's go to conflict. I find this is the one there, the, there's the highest level of agreement between people. Position one, ah, it's a difference of opinion. Misunderstanding, miscommunication, misinterpretation. Then it's disagreement, friction, tension, squabble, spat. Then conflict, argument, confrontation, clash. And then war. Battle, fight, altercation, dispute, lawsuit. Irreconcilable differences. So a Canadian clash is much worse than an Australian clash. In Canada, it's three. In Australia, it's one. We had a situation in Vancouver, an Australian auditor characterized the difference of opinion between her and the client as a clash. The partners removed her from the project thinking, oh my God, we're going to lose this client otherwise. Mm -hmm. There was no danger of that happening, but her choice of words triggered a much stronger reaction than she intended to trigger. Right. Okay. So this, in my experience, so remember during probation period, the th top three issues in my experience, lack of initiative, poor teamwork, and feedback that is misunderstood. Those are create, in my experience, the big, like vast majority of the challenges that people, of the immigrants who lose their job during the probation period come from one, two, or three of these issues. Some will combine you know, more than one. Okay. 